All right, here we go. Time for another solo over Nighter in the Woods. I'm thinking we do a group shelter. The Tarp Mahal of group shelters. Let's get to it. All right, so here we are. We want to build a group shelter. A few weeks back, we did a two tarp group shelter with a fire inside. If you haven't seen that video, here's the thumbnail. Check it out. It was something along the lines of solo overnight building a two tarp group shelter in the woods uh, with the fireplace inside. Um, it was a good video. It basically set the stage for future videos of people going out in a group of two to four, maybe even 10 people. What you can do. Now, in that video, we talked about Basically, what you do for yourself, you just increase it for other people. Add tarps together or bring larger tarps. So today, with that mindset, I wanna bring a large tarp. We're talking a 20 by 20, and we're gonna build the Tarp Mahal. Here's before. And here's after. This, in my opinion, is one of the most underrated tools in camping, bushcraft, survival, etc. I mean, you could carry this with you. There's, there's ones that actually break apart into two different pieces. I haven't sharpened this thing at all in two years, and it just destroys the landscape. It makes a nice flat level spot, and I'm happy with this. And yes, go to my video description box, click on my Amazon affiliate link, and you'll see this bad boy sitting right there. Those that watch my channel, you know that it's go big or go home. I'm going to do everything to the best of my ability and better than everybody else, or die trying. Um, on YouTube, one tarp configuration that's paraded around everywhere is the infamous tarp tent. It's bomb proof. You have a small opening, it's covered on all sides, and the best part is you use a tarp to do it. Now, I've seen 8x8s, 10x10s, even 3x3s and I've done it several times on my channel. We even buttoned military ponchos together to get the exact same configuration and it worked out well. Now, I'm thinking again, go big or go home. I have in my hand a 20 by 20 heavy duty tarp. It's reversible. We have gray on the outside and I believe black on the inside. So we can figure this out. I wanna lay this thing out in the area that we cleaned out and then stake it out, prop it up, and get her done. So the two problems I'm having right now is that tree right there. If you pan over here, we have that tree there. So I'm thinking about taking those down. This way I can slide my tarp another four feet back and it will give me room for my fire pit.
Okay, so that thing is huge. And so looking at this, you gotta think about things and how it should be in bushcraft and survival. You shouldn't just randomly just pull things out of your butt and just start wheeling and dealing. You gotta think about if I do this, solve this problem, two, three, four, five other problems could occur. How do I go about attacking those problems? So looking at this, we have a 20 by 20. Everyone that's done this tarp configuration has always used a 10 by 10 or an eight by eight. Being that we have a 20 by 20, that's times two. So instead of the second grommet, I need to start at the fourth grommet. So let's get her done. There's our corner, that's one, two, three, here's four. I'm gonna put this stake through the grommet and stake it all the way down to the earth. There we go. Then start at the fourth one on that corner and pull it tight. One, two, three, here's our fourth grommet right here. I'm gonna take my corner and I'm going to place it underneath and put it in line with the fourth grommet. Right there, just like that. Here's our fourth grommet right there. Take this and just tuck it underneath. Put it in line with that fourth grommet and then pull it tight. So now we gotta think this through. 20 by 20 and it's probably gonna be raised up at least 10 feet. So I gotta walk through and try to find a sapling at least two and a half inches in diameter and cut it to about 10 foot. If it's too long, we can cut it down. What I don't want is to cut it too short. I'm gonna use that for basically our prop up pole to lift this thing up. Tell you what, just like Doctor Who's TARDIS, that thing's a lot bigger on the inside. This thing's huge, man. That's a mansion. Behold, I give you the tarp mahal. Just like in the back, you start at the fourth grommet. I'm gonna count one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna stick this one out here, hop onto that side and do the exact same thing. I'm gonna have to play around with it a little bit because I don't want that pole coming down. There we go. And now we can take this corner piece here and tuck it underneath. Give us a nice straight edge. And also, if you look at this, there's a small trough right here. The water would have come down to get caught in this lip and then get funneled off somewhere else. Now we're gonna try and make this door. I want to bring this out, fold it, and then stake it down to that fourth uh, stake in the grommet over there. We get our bat wings out here. There's one. two I'm gonna go ahead and tie this one to that stake down there. The old Marlin spike hitch right here. And just hook it around the stake. There we 
go. And there's the rain, so so it's dumping now. So this worked out perfectly. Um, and no, I actually didn't time it like that. The rain's supposed to come like two or three hours from now, and it decided it's coming now. So hopefully you can hear me over this. The microphone's right down here. Hopefully it's picking me up. But uh, I'm happy with this. 20 by 20. And just looking at this, if you put a cot over here, or two cots, you could probably put a table and chair right here. I can stand up in this and get dressed. Now as far as a door goes, a poncho on the inside of this, roll it down, it's gonna block the entrance. You could easily get a hot stove inside here, do a small cutout, especially if you're using a canvas tarp, and just get one of those fiberglass protectors on there or ceramic protectors to go around the pipe, run the pipe out. I'm happy with this. Now the rain's going to go for a couple more hours. I'm just going to hunker down in here until it stops. And we can get a fire going, get chow going. Until then, though, we have our midweek videos. And we dropped one. This is midweek video number 26. Steel wool, the guaranteed ember. And let me tell you what. If you're not carrying steel wool after that video, there's something wrong with you. Because I am 100% convinced we use the sunlight through a magnifying glass to light it. Lit it with a bow drill ember. We lit it with a ferro rod, flint and steel, an open flame from a lighter, and I'm willing to bet you the small spark from a lighter will ignite it as well. So if you want a guaranteed ember, get some quadruple ot or four zero uh, steel wool and put that in your kit. There's the side view right there. You see how far that thing goes back. And there's the back view right there. All right, here we go. Add some Tabasco in that bad boy. 
We've got macaroni and kielbasa. Perfect. Yeah, catch you all in a few. Mm. Protein and carbs, baby. So a lot of things coming up here in 2024. We have one thing I'll announce right now. Once I get the schedule up, I'll show you where to go. Um, is classes. I'll be teaching classes in 2024. I'm not going to say with who or where, but it's going to happen. We're going to be doing some type of basic class um, for those that follow my channel, for those that want to train with me and train with other people at different facilities around the country. Now's your chance. So give me a few weeks. Once I get that, I'm going to post it on my Facebook. I'll post it on my um, YouTube community page, and we'll announce it right here as well. But that's what's coming up down the road. So something to think about, something to save money for. On that note, I'm going to let her and de-stress. Catch you all in the morning. And here we go. See if I can get that one on the bottom. Flip it over, and there we go. Just missing some cheese, but we're still in business. That worked for me. Catch you all in a few. Breakfast in my cold handle skillet. Boom, we got eight of these in my Etsy store. That link is inside my video description box. Along with that, we have the hat patches, bag patches, universal patches. We have the strikers, like the one I used in today's video. We have uh, meat forks, regular forks, which are my twisted frontier forks. We also have frog gigs in there. Coming soon, a whole lot more. Now, real quick on these skillets, I'm still bombarded after 10 months. My videos drop for the most part. 10.30 a.m.-ish on Sundays, and that's Eastern time. When I do that, my skillets are in my Etsy shop. If you watch the video on a Monday or Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday, or even on Sunday, six hours later after your football game, guess what? The cold handle skillets are going to be sold out. So before you bombard me and say, where's the skillets? Listen to the video. Watch the entire video. Watch the video all the way to the end, because if you don't, you miss good free information. So there's an example of a group shelter, a simple tarp tent that everybody and their mom has done, just built on a larger scale. You can get four people inside there with all their gear, or six to eight people cramped, but they're going to fit. So something to think about in case you get caught with your pants down somewhere and you have a group of people and you need to get out of the elements. Works every time. Tarp tent, one of my personal favorites. With that, all the gear in my videos can be found in two places. One, my Amazon affiliate page, and two, my Etsy store. Both links are found inside my description box. Now, please do me that favor. Hit that like and subscribe button, then ring that notification bell. Once you ring that bell, please select all notifications. And as always, thank you for your comments, views, and support. Thanks for watching. Get out in the field, have some fun. I'm going to catch you next time.